Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing some channel drains with a sump pump system to solve a flooding issue for a fellow YouTube content creator. His name is Todd and he manages the TW Home Show. I'll go ahead and I'll link in the description below his channel. That way, if you're interested, you can go check it out. But basically what's happening is the backyard to the neighbor's property is all sloped towards this porch. All the water, when it rains, flows into the porch, and on heavy enough rains, it can actually get high enough to start entering in through the sliding glass doors, and it can flood the rooms out. So we're going to install channel drains in front of both of these glass doors, and we're also going to run a separate 4-inch SDR 35 PVC pipe for the two downspouts back here to get that water out as well. So as you can see, we're measuring out how big of a cut that we're gonna to have to make in this concrete in order to sink both this pipe and channel drain down into the concrete. Now you wanna make sure that you get this right because you get one chance to make a cut in concrete before you start messing things up. So you wanna triple check your measurements here before making this cut. Now, as you can see, we're gonna use the channel drains as straight edges because they are 10 feet long, so they work perfect for this. We're going to put, put them next to each other and then we're going to go ahead and score off the area with a marker. That way we have a nice line so we can follow that line to make our cut in the concrete. Once you're happy with where you've drawn your lines on your concrete, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use either a demo saw, a handheld one, or in this case, we decided to use a walk behind concrete saw. Now the walk behind concrete saw is so much easier and you can get a much straighter cut with this saw and it saves on your back and on your knees. Now you can use a demo saw, a handheld one, but it is a little bit more taxing on your body and it takes a lot more time to make a really nice straight cut. So if you are cutting a lot of concrete, I really would recommend just using a walk behind concrete saw. It makes life so much easier. Now a quick tip whenever using a walk behind concrete saw, having a second pair of eyes always helps. They can stand in the front and they can watch and make sure that you're staying on your line so you're getting a nice straight cut. If you start to stray off to the left or the right, they can kind of guide you with their hand and tell you to go either left or right and bring it back into center. Once you have your cuts all completed, it's time to take out the Gandalf staff and start breaking concrete. Now this works really well when there's no rebar in the concrete, but if there is a rebar grid, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to break the concrete out and this method may not work. But for concrete that doesn't have any rebar or little to none, Basically, you're gonna use a long iron bar and you're gonna just come down on sections of the concrete and pound it as hard as you can. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna fracture the concrete into chunks and then another man can go ahead and lift that piece of concrete out, put it in a wheelbarrow and go ahead and wheelbarrow it up to the front or wherever you're gonna be taking it. So in some areas where we couldn't get our concrete saw in, like underneath the pool cage skeleton, we went ahead and used a hammer chisel to go ahead and bust the remaining concrete out so we'll be able to get our pipes underneath. Once we have all the concrete cut out, busted out, and removed, we're going to go ahead and just kind of clean up the area and wash all the concrete dust and the dirt into the open trench. This makes it a lot easier and just let it flow down that trench. So basically we're gonna have to clean up this area a couple of times, but we just do the initial after the cut and the bust out. That way when we're digging, all that's left to clean up at the very end is gonna be dirt before we do our cement. Now it's time to start installing our drainage and we're gonna be installing the gutter drain first. And as we lay that pipe, we're gonna be digging that trench out. That way we can get the necessary fall to ensure that that line drains well. Now, the reason why we're gonna keep our downspouts on their own separate drain pipe, instead of just connecting it into the channel drain and having everything on one line, is because during a heavy rain, when those gutter downspouts are being fed by that roof and it's going into the system, if they're piped in on that channel drain, what's gonna ultimately happen is all that water is gonna start backing up and it's gonna start coming out of the channel drains and it's gonna be making a situation worse 
in the porch. So it's potentially going to flood out the porch in those rooms if you have it piped in that way. So you want to have both of these systems on two separate lines. That way it can't happen and the system can't get overwhelmed. So our downspout drain pipe, which is going to be the SDR35, that pipe is going to be slightly sloped. Now our channel drains, however, are going to be level. We want the bubble directly in the middle of the level. The reason for this is because if you start trying to slope channel drains in concrete, what's going to ultimately happen is by the time you start getting to the end of your run, the channel drains are going to be so low in the concrete, it's going to one, look unsightly, and two, it's going to possibly create a trip hazard. So it's not the way to do it with channel drains. Channel drains are going to be picking up immediate surface runoff water that travels across a non-porous surface. That water is going to drop down into the channel, and because that channel is going to be water's path of least resistant, the water is going to find its way through those channel drains and out the discharge end, which is going to be falling down into our sump pump basin. Our channel drains are run on 3-inch PVC. Now the reason they're on 3-inch is because we're going to be pouring concrete back and we want space. The 4-inch SDR is lower in the ground compared to the channel drains. But when we get to the end of the run here, we're going to go ahead and adapt over from 3-inch to 4-inch. And we're going to pipe two 4-inch lines into our sump pump basin. Our sump pump discharge line is piped out all the way to the street curb to drain this system. We're using one and a half inch PVC pipe for this. Now the pump is gonna be a Liberty pump that moves 50 gallons per minute. And it also is gonna be on a battery backup system. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let Todd explain to you how he hooked this system up. So here's what I got. You'd only need a few components to make this a backup system, backup sump pump. Now right here, I already had an outlet in the garage here, so I'm using this garage outlet and I drilled a hole through the back of the house, through the back of this outlet, to the back of the house. And let me turn you around here. So I drilled a hole through here and I let a wire out through here. And this is going to plug into our inverter right here. This is a 1500 watt, should be plenty for a sump pump, uh, surge power up to 3000 watts watts and uh and you can plug two items in here or two sump pumps if you want right now i have it off right here i got a i decided decided to go with a 100 amp hour deep cycle lithium battery now i bought lithium because i don't want to have any maintenance it's lightweight and uh it can last for years and years and years and many 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 thousand recycle times so i like that this uh inverter always keeps that topped off and charged and it's this is like a bypass system so if i still have power going to the circuit to the outlet then this thing is just going to charge and top up the battery and it's going to run the electric right through it through here and out to an outlet that i have on the side of the house that i'll show you so i put a plug in here because that's how this attaches otherwise if it was like a single stranded wire i wouldn't have to have this plug wire but this keeps it nice and clean. And if something happens to this inverter system or battery, I can unplug this here and plug it directly into a power outlet. Of course, that will only work with, uh, uh, you know, grid power. If the power is down and I got that cord from the outlet to the side plugged into a regular circuit panel outlet, then, uh, you know, it'd be just like how it was without backup power. I will go ahead and link that video in the description below along with his channel like I said earlier in the beginning of this video. That way if you're interested you can go check that out. So at the end of our sump pump discharge line we're going to go ahead and put a percolation tee. That way the line can slowly drain out once the rain event has ended and it'll slowly perk down into the ground. This 4 inch tee is a good size opening and that will help with leaching to allow the water to leach down into the ground. But when the sump pump is running, it will be popping and coming up out of the pop-up emitter. Now you probably notice there is another smaller pop-up emitter that's missing its top that's next to our French Drain Man turf restrictor plate pop-up emitter. The reason why we left that is because we believe that goes to the neighbor's yard and we obviously didn't want to mess with anything that they had going on. All right, well, we have all of our pipe work plumbed in. We have our drain lines installed. We got the sump pump along with the check valve hooked up. 
and now it's time to start mixing some concrete. That way we can put the cement back into the patio. Before we put the cement back, let's go ahead and do a rundown of the system. So we put a Y on the gutter. That way we have a clean out on that end. We got our channel drains leveled out and installed. We got three inch pipe in between the two channel drains so they can flow together with one another. Now the reason we use three inch pipe for the channel drains is that way we have enough space on top of there for concrete because you want the concrete to be a certain thickness that way it doesn't crack over time. The four inch pipe is lower than the channel drains so we have good thickness above that. All right, we got the yard all buried up. We got the pavers put back. We always try to leave the place looking like we were never here. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's more difficult. It just depends on the situation. Whenever you're dealing with yard drainage, every single job is different. There's always unique factors when it comes to different properties and you never know what you're gonna run into. Whenever you're cementing channel drains into the ground, do not skip out on the tape. Get yourself a good tape and tape over all the channel drain grates because I can tell you right now, if you don't do it, you're going to regret it. You might think that you could get the concrete around these channel drains without it going inside of there, but I can tell you right now, you're going to be gravely mistaken. As soon as you start concrete and that concrete's going to be a mess when it's going in, it's going to go over those grates and it's going to fall down in there. And when it falls down in there, it's either going to create a clog or you're going to have to hurry up and try to take those grates out to clean it out and you're going to mess up your concrete forming. So just spend the extra money, get the tape, spend the extra time, tape over those grates. It's going to make your life so much easier. Another tip whenever you're working with concrete, if you're going to be mixing up a large amount, you know, if you're a DIYer, you could always do it with a shovel and a wheelbarrow. But we have found that if you're mixing up a large amount, it gets pretty tiring using the shovel method. So I would say either rent or invest in a mixer. These mixers come in handy. They're good for mixing up concrete, thin set, mortar, you name it. You can even mix up five gallon buckets of paint with them. Now, I didn't get a whole lot of film doing this concrete process because obviously I'm working too and my hands have gloves on them and they're covered in concrete and we have to be working quickly while we're dealing with this concrete because you don't want it to start hardening up too much. You want to be able to get it formed nicely before it starts hardening up and we're out here in Florida, so it's hot and it'll start hardening up on you pretty quickly. So there's not a whole lot of film, but whenever you're working with concrete, you know, you want to be attentive. You want to be paying attention to what you're doing and try to clean as you go. Use a wet sponge with a five gallon bucket or some sort of bucket next to you with water. Have another guy running fresh water, dumping out the old water, you know, clean as you go. This will make it a lot easier. Because we had some extra bags of concrete, we went ahead and just put cement around the sump pump because it was pretty sandy in this area and we want to keep the sand from going into our sump pump system. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you gained some knowledge from watching it. And if you live in the Tampa Bay area or surrounding counties and you're experiencing rainwater intrusion into your home or property, give us a call. We can come out there, assess the situation, and help design a system that fits your needs. We specialize in everything rainwater drainage, from French drains to sump pump systems to roof runoff systems to channel drains, you name it. If it's stormwater management, we can handle it. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off.